Hello there and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4. This one has 10 tips and tricks for your evil and dark cultures. I have summarized all the things that come with the start with this culture and did my best to summarize 10 things that you will find helpful whenever you want to play with them, build your own faction around them, all those little things. Now, let's get started with number one. One of the keystone things about these guys is they come with the ability to negate city stability in companalties. That means when your city is unhappy, usually that's a problem. Usually you lose money. Usually you eventually even lose provinces. But not so if you are evil. The tier 2 town hall already negates the city stability problem and basically when you have this in all of your cities and your entire culture is dark, you can just do whatever you want in the entirety of the events and whatnot. Every event resolution that gives you minus city stability, you have nothing to care about. This is really powerful and something worth knowing and worth playing around, but be assured about two things. You have to be entirely dark and you have to have the tier two town halls everywhere. Otherwise the negative uh, thing will still happen, but it's easy to ride and it's a pretty cool concept. Number two regards something about your scouts. So it's really easy to overlook that these are not your typical scouts. They come with various camouflage skills. They are undetectable in forests, in rocks and in swamps. They are one of the stealthiest scout units in the game. This is massive because that means you can use these guys as extremely nasty scouting parties that can virtually go over enemy territory entirely undetected. And you can also use it to plunder any provinces that have been claimed on these tiles that they have camouflage on quite risk free. This stealthiness is pretty cool to know and it's really easy to overlook it because nowhere you see it uh, openly pronounced and uh, once I knew it I really have figured out that the whole dark faction has a way heavier emphasis on stealth early play than I thought. Now you know as well. Number three regards a more obvious thing about this uh, whole dark thing they come with the trait of call the weak so they have a couple of units which deal extra damage to weakened units and they even gain regeneration if they hit a, a weakened unit now you have only one unit in your roster the warlock which applies weakening natively okay so we got a innate combination that just works on out and spreads weakness and utilizes weakness but this is something that you can't capitalize on and i personally think that the entire debuff route is something that you can go for the dark faction really really well and bringing in one or two new sources of spreading weakness will make your attackers a lot stronger basically all your melee units have that uh, called the weak trait but not the ranged units, so you have to apply weakness to be really effective, but it really pays off to do so, and you get even better results if you have some external sources. Now then, let's get on over to number four. Your roster of the Dark Culture is very heavy on shock troops, and also the only civilization that comes with a tier one shock troop. If you are unfamiliar with the concept, shock troops break the defensive stance of units and they negate retaliation attacks. The only people who are able to counter that are polearm units and therefore in the early game they are pretty much the only thing that is able to stop your early game because everybody else will not be able to strike back when they got struck by a dark warrior. And these are spammable, they are cheap, they are easily drafted and with some extra swarming traits you can have a lot of these on the table before turn 30. So in a nutshell the dark troops are therefore very very heavy in the shock department and to make things even better on tier 3 we gain a dark knight unit which comes with a heavy charge strike which is ignoring the pole arm weakness so basically these guys can trample down polearm units 
without the, them having any benefits of being polearm units. But here again, it's a tier 3 unit. You have to invest quite heavily into the city development. So basically, before you have access to tier 3 units in a wider scale, polearm pole arm units are the one type of unit you should be careful about because they can counter your blitz attacks quite well because beyond your dark warriors you only have a run-of-the-mill standard bow unit which is really just so standard there's pretty much nothing i would have i was able to bring up about them they're just arches end of the story and after that you have your own polearm units and spellcasters so in a nutshell you are not really able to bring up anything that counters your innate weakness until tier 3. Which brings me up to, uh, to number 5. While we're talking about weaknesses, let's continue on that topic. You have no access to native support units whatsoever. That means no healing, no extra bonuses, no, no nothing. This is something to be aware of. Because this is something that basically every other faction has. It's basically the price you have to pay for having access to shock troops, which are in most civilizations only tier 3 units. You have that on tier 1. You have to pay some price, I guess. So all in all, your lack of support troops is nothing you need to be too worried about because you can work around it. But it's, if you are unaware of it, it might become a problem for you. So, number six, let's talk about something these guys are good about. Let's talk about some strengths. The Dark Faction is extremely good at researching, as a matter of fact. Their racial buildings all come with a income for research and or mana, and often they come with extra gold income. So all in all, these guys are pretty good at maintaining armies, researching and casting spells this is something you should know when you're going into that because builds that go into these venues thrive particularly well in the dark civilizations now let's head on over to number seven something else that your dark civilization likes quarries and mines because you're featuring a special province improvement the dark forge which becomes basically more powerful in terms of draft income the more quarries and mines are surrounding you so when you're looking for cities you are most like or best off with cities that can feature a lot of uh, quarries and mines because reasons obviously because if you utilize these guys really well you can get a lot of extra draft income which will make your unit recruitment even more powerful pretty neat stuff but it requires some preparation and it's good to know that before you start playing that you will be looking for quarries and mines to utilize this baby as well as possible now then number eight let's talk about tomes for a second so the dark tomes are all together aimed towards debilitation or necromancy or ice magic that's the native state of uh, game it combines pretty well with society traits and spellbooks from the chaos and the astral realm chaos because that's pretty good at going for direct damage that goes well into your blitz tactics it's going well into buffing up small units that goes well into your relatively uh, strong level one roster and astral because it plays really well with all the spell casting attributes and you can bolster up your units to a point where well you can just have very very buffed up and powerful units especially due to all the unit enhancement things and the easy access to mana and research points you can easily buff up those small units to something even more devastating number nine is something that i well let's go on further with the synergies and that's going to be towards which other rosters are going to be good for you and that's basically summarized industrious and the mystic roster are to my own liking the best synergy that's due to two reasons. The Mystic roster features an easy access to powerful supporters and therefore they can enchant up your units and there's a lot of synergy to be found there. And the Industrious guys, they have easy access to 
defense increasing things, which is something which can make your assault more or will add some longevity into your assault so basically your dudes won't keel over after a blow or two so that's pretty pretty powerful obviously you're best off with a mixture of some types of units from different rosters or different tomes it's up to you to find what fits to your current playstyle strategy because there is no obvious solution to that i've even seen a viable build path towards cold affinity so you are pretty open into many directions but i'd personally recommend you strongly to combine into something else any other culture or tomes like necromancy is also a good party because otherwise you will fall over after a very strong early game in the mid and late game this strategy can a little bit can be a little bit problematic which brings me to number 10 let's talk about your standard rosters strengths and weaknesses and what to do about them so your general play style if you don't mod modify anything about it is extremely burst heavy and focused around whittling down the enemy in a very strong early attack and do the best that you can that the retaliation blow will be not strong enough to topple you over. The weakness from the warlocks does, this, does that thing and the shock attacks from your units do that as well. At the same time your night guides are really good at countering the enemy's own charge attacks if they have any. And what's also worth mentioning is that these guys are actually armor shredders. The dark stalwart skill does negate armor uh, over the course of the time so all in all you are really good at alpha striking but you need to pack up something behind that because otherwise you will be falling flat like i said already and a the good part about this burst heaviness is that you'll have a very very easy time in conquering lo most of the map Unless your world is stupidly difficult, you can easily kill off one or two units before they can even act, and therefore the retaliation blows will be very, very low. When you know what you have to take out in the enemy party, and which parts you will debilitate afterwards, you are most of the time easy to clear out enemies that are significantly stronger than you once you get used to your own strategy and your own strengths and weaknesses. Also worth mentioning is that your strategy, due to its burst heaviness, plays well with expendable troops. Basically, consider having a couple of troops that are good to die, low experience, freshly recruited troops, for example, or like I do it here, the uh, I'm going here the undead way with uh, skeletons and soul harvesting, or starting to. So there is something to work around that but uh, know about the basic character of the dark culture and build something around that to propel yourself into the mid and late game because I personally saw that as the most glaring weakness because the dark knights are really really cool especially since they are able to do actually AoE so they are really really powerful but beyond that there's not much behind them, but uh, these guys, they are they are your powerhouse. They are the, the thing that you're working towards too. And it really is a feasible strategy to rush their um, construction building, at least in one city. Now then, I hope these thoughts were helpful for you, something inspiring in between. There's of course way more to say, and uh, it was impossible to summarize all of the things in just one video, but I thank you for your time, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed, leave a subscription if you'd be so kind, I'd be very very glad, and check out the description box, there is a playlist link to all the other Age of Wonders things that I did. That being said, thanks again for being around, and see you next time.